Testing, check, one, two, three, unit one, two, and three is gone, disappeared, unit four is in heart attack mode, life support, the entire site is in life support at Fukushima, and we're looking for a way forward, and I put a link to a previous video I done back in August, where I used a whole bunch of shiny pictures, and tried to articulate a way forward, and so we got a lot of miles under our belts tonight, when we look back over the last 70 odd days, we slugged it out a little bit, beat up on a couple of dummies, popped a few heads, it was all fine, it was a lot of fun, it was a little odd. And the way forward is very simple, we got to admit what's going on down there, and we've seen a headline today of that, uh, let me pop that up, because I just caught that that moment because people are yelling at me. Check the news, Dana, before you go online. Massive radioactivity release at Fukushima going on for almost three years now. And that's from TV. I know! It's like poof, over the top. Oh, it reminds me. Am I stuttering tonight? Is my audio okay? Let's come down and check that before we do anything else tonight. Oh. Don't click on the buttons too much, Dana. Make sure the screen is lined up. Hang on. There you go. Is everything looking good? I'll come back and check the comments. Hi, Irene Rell. Miss Frill. Moments, nothing more. Castle Mamai. Ben. Dwayne, Lisa, and that's quite the headline, massive radioactivity release at Fukushima going on for almost three years now, visible steam just the tip of the iceberg, um, that's as good as you can hope for, that's literally what we were hoping for, it's a start that if media was to come out in a slow, you know, instead of crying with sad music and having everybody lose their minds, I think it's more appropriate. Uh, so my sound is coming in good. Good. Thank you, uh, Lisa, Duane. Excuse me. Hi, Candace. Tom. Broken ass on alert. 1010 in BC. You're a little close. You're within a thousand miles. Now you're up in the north. Uh, British Columbia. Top of the Queen Charlotte Islands. Probably the most spectacular imaginable spot on the planet. P certainly the most magical. At high tide up there, folks, uh, during storms, it'll wash up on the beaches thousands and thousands and thousands of scallops. And the locals, like Broken Ass Islander there, well, not him, because he knows better, but they used to go down anyway in just last week and last month, probably, and pick up these things and eat them. And they're allowed to legally. Can you imagine living at a place where at uh, during storms it washes your beach with food like scallops you know how much money you gotta pay for scallops at restaurants well broken ass islander actually lives in a spot up at the top of the queen charlotte's towards alaska nor the almost the most northerly point of canada and so tonight we wanted to talk about solutions and the solution is pretty straightforward that electronics cannot get on that site and work functionally around x-rays and high um, and high heat and so the solution is you have to take all your strip your say a backhoe for instance or a plow well you would strip all electronics off it is my take on it and you would run a couple of miles of hydraulics and so you would need uh, systems to do that for you and you can have like a train that's controlled by uh, cables directly to your backhoes or your um, your plows or your equipment your stuff you're going to go in and pick up you got to go in and find the hot pieces the really hot pieces that are in the topsoil from the explosions and you got to clean up that whole place without murdering people without taking the most vulnerable and uh, the most impoverished of society and destroying them 
and just leaving them to suffer. There's no need to do that. And like I say, once again, this can't start until uh, they admit it. And right now they haven't admitted it, and they, don't, they do not intend to admit it. I mean, as you've seen in the last two nights, where I went through headline after headline after headline, talking about, you know, in 2011, they were planning on moving the government a couple hundred miles west of Tokyo, but not letting the people evacuate. And remember, Russia evacuated 7,500 communities back in the late 40s, so there's already a precedent uh, for this kind of mass evacuation because of that's what the government's job is, to get you out of harm's way, not to move themselves out of harm's way, make you pay taxes and live and suffer and have um, deformed children and destroy the children that are there right now because this attacks children, this attacks uh, pregnant women and the fetuses in an unimaginable way as you can look at Fallujah in Iraq after the British and Americans shot it up with the uranium-238 that's all an A-10 warthog shoots a ton and a half a minute that's uh, 71 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation a minute and so there's a lot of radiation on this planet that has to be cleaned up but right now we gotta de deal with Fukushima and because Fukushima is an unusual one um, radioactive water at the rates of 40 and 50 million and billion Beckwolds is inches under the surface at all times. And during earthquakes and during a lot of equipment uh, moval on that site, that radiation comes up to the ground. And so it's not actually a site fit for a human, period. Uh, most of Japan is actually not fit for a human. That's Gallo's laugh because, you know, hundreds of millions of people now are in a lot of uh, danger every day. And this is a very real danger that we have to dress as grown-ups, not hiding behind a tarp, um, not pretending that, you know, a small corporation that is manipulating human rights in order to stop the world from understanding what's truly going on there, they're hiding that away because they figure they know better or they figure because they're not smart enough or capable enough of dealing with it that the whole world shouldn't get an opportunity to put its head together. And remember, there's 4,800 peer review studies every day that are published and locked away. If this was made public, these people that are producing all these academic journals every single day, they're ready to go on another one now, right? Because they just published that one. And this is a worthy one to start doing it on. And this is something we have to face. And what happens is that the nuclear lobbyists and uh, the military industrial machine is terrified that we'll end the nuclear research and nuclear weapons proliferation on this planet and nuclear power plants on this planet and they're probably right uh, but they have no future they're murdering their own children and themselves and their loved ones and everybody they ever cared about uh, by keeping this game alive there's no good outcome to this this has to be dealt with, just like the GMO has to be dealt with. We need to engineer, if we're going to engineer food, we need to engineer more magnesium, more potassium, more calcium into our food, not take it all out of our foods like the GMO has done. We just, we need to do the right thing as a society, is, is what I'm basically saying. And so Fukushima, let me get back on it, is that if we went to Fukushima, it's this simple. We use oil hydraulics. We use cameras from far away. We got all the skill we need with video games to control this. We got the top gamers on the planet that we bring in and we sit them down. And their job is not to get no rads and drive these machines and skim the top 10 feet off that entire site because the rods are in that and put it all in the sarcophagus. Not try to shift through the top 10 feet looking for the pieces but to skin out the entire top 10 feet at least of the soil because they sprayed so much water on it, a lot of this stuff has sank quite a long ways down and infected, I'll call it infected. They turned the soil around it into its own engine, into its own radiation. That's a start. We have to deal with this site. We have to contain this site. We have to win the, this site. And we can't do it by hiding behind a tarp or by using the mafia and the mob to go out in Shanghai, the most vulnerable of society. We do it by creating heroes. We do it by hope.
by giving people hope. We do it by uh, respect, by not allowing others to get into harm's way. There's construction sites right here in Canada where they don't care if you spend $5,000 to do something as long as you don't have to get a band-aid after, not even for a little tiny cut, because of the insurance. Well, the insurance companies don't have no say on that site. And so everybody is put in harm's way constantly. And then they're, they're murdered, and it takes a couple of months for them to die or a year for them to die, but they die a slow, horrible death. And that's not, that's not supposed to be the legacy that, you know, the destruction of this was utter cruelty by uh, people that, that are not qualified to do the job. And so we have to admit we got a problem. And we have to rationally just start dealing with it and taking all of our institutions, putting them to work, how to uh, s put the stuff in this actual sarcophagus like the licenses says they're supposed to do, but they have never invented. And they've been running these power plants for 60 years. <coughs> Excuse me. you got to remember, in the late 40s in Russia, they evacuated 7,500 villages because they've done the right thing even though they've done the wrong thing by pouring uh, uranium-238 from the plutonium production into the local river, which is the reason they had to evacuate 7,500 villages per permanently and 9,000 square miles is still uninhabitable. Fukushima just doesn't care, and they're forced into a box because they've been enslaved by this military-industrial machine. That's what Fukushima was. It was a military-industrial uh, site. And we have to treat it as such in the sense of it has to be dealt with. Same as Sellafield's got to be dealt with. Same as Hanford got to be dealt with. And uh, this is not a game that we're talking about. This is the real deal. There's no other way around this. This has to be done. There's no more procrastinating about this. There's no more, like the people that are in charge have already proved they're incapable and they don't have any abilities or skills or any kind of merit or any honor because they've had every opportunity and they had whatever money they ever wanted to do the job and they haven't done nothing but dump it in the ocean and dump it in the landfills like Hanford has 41 miles of open pit and we need we got responsible people out there that will deal with this and have been trying to get deal with this and that has to that has to stop that can't contain that can't continue anymore your money is worth nothing your retirement packages are worth nothing. You can't escape this on the planet. You can't escape what happened to the Philippines, right? You can't escape that. That's coming everywhere. That's from a radiated ocean. That's from all the radiation that those typhoons, when they converged upon Japan, picked up all those isotopes that are in over that entire country. Look, I've covered in the last two videos extensively with all the headlines for an hour each painstakingly to make sure everybody understands the numbers and how they're located throughout the entire country. And that pollution has made its way all the way up past Tokyo, all the way to the west coast. Think about it, the winds, the prevailing winds are from the west. Yet it's still made its way the entire way west. So the east side of Fukushima, all the prefectures down there are, are uh, you don't hear about them, you don't see those numbers, because they're beyond imagination because that's where uh, most of it went. But the typhoons is whipping it up, 21 this years alone, is whipping that stuff up and lugging it everywhere and depositing it and relugging it. And the rain and the snow is liberating it and not only pushing it into all your aquifers, all the sewer systems. Uh, you can take, you can see how many children were, uh, 10 out of 10 children were peeing out radiation four months after this happened. 10 out of 10 that were tested were peeing out radiation. Toilets are radiated, the sewer systems are radiated. Radiation, you can't scrub it off. Like, I know there was a comment there earlier about the aircraft carriers, where 5,000 uh, soldiers were a mile away from the plume and were hit by a direct blast of the plume from uh, number three. Number three was plutonium and uranium, which is what all reactors are. Not strontium and iron, uh, iodine, but plutonium and uranium. And the plutonium and the uranium went out there, and so these soldiers, there's 70 of them right away that are in dire straits. And uh, they all had to sign the waivers originally, say, before they were allowed to get off that ship, all 5,000 of them were supposed to sign a waiver, they weren't getting off the ship. Uh, and there's an interview below this video of uh, one of the people on the deck of that aircraft carrier 
they had to remove 12 engines from the jets and the helicopters rather because they were contaminated radiated from sucking up all that uh, buckyballs and there's links to those peer review studies below about those they're from the sulfur spraying salt water has this uh, extraordinary reaction with a hot corium because it's atomizing and so the uranium uh, and the plutonium or strontium and cesiums but uranium and plutonium in particular uh, get ingested into these buckyballs excuse me and they don't they're not solutable in water and they're like the dust you see in your room and so they can be transported very long distances right across oceans right around the planet not only through your troposphere and your ionosphere and your atmosphere itself not only through just prevailing winds uh, but they reliberate, you know, every time there's storm, rain, wind, forest fires, um, you know, when children are walking to school, uh, when your cars are driving down the road, the water's splashing. There's just so much of it, 300,000 Beckwell's disintegrations per second, literally all the way from Fukushima to Tokyo. And so that's not going to change. These are very heavy particles. They would have to dig up the top six inches of everything in Japan uh, but it's also in all the groundwater and aquifers. And you can't measure for uh, these high particles with a Geiger counter. A Geiger counter is not going to get the high particles. If you're not careful, you're going to get the wrong numbers and you're going to be putting out false alarms or, or uh, you're, you know, you're going to get low numbers when it should be a high number. Uh, if you sniff early with it, you can screw it up. If you don't let it settle down because these are excitable adjectives that you're using to read a certain, a certain, now it says that on your Geiger counters that it can find plutonium and uranium, but you have to get it calibrated to look for the isotope in particular that you're looking for, and you can't look for all those isotopes, but you want to look for their byproducts. <coughs> and they're always telling people to look for cesium-137 and uh, iodine, which is short life, and so if that shows up all the way over here, then that would mean it's coming from a recent uh, fission and so it wasn't from the nuclear testing, you know, if it shows up, iodine-131. But they don't tell you to look for iodine-129, which has got a 15 million year half-life. You've got to multiply that by 10, so it's 150 million year life of that iodine. Uh, but they tell you about 131, but they don't tell you about 132, which has a 40 day half-life, or life. They talk, cause, but you ingest it nine times quicker, they talk about 131. And I know I'm going down that path, and I didn't mean to quite go all that way down there. Uh, I wanted to come back to E&E &E News, because we're their bastard children anyway. At some point, they'll have to adopt us, you know. We're a product of them. They actually drive us. They're like, an, they're like a little nuclear engine inside of us every day, driving everybody. Everybody's out there hunting, hoping, looking for some logic. Uh, and that doesn't change. I'm just a product of hunting and looking all day and reading and researching and listening to lectures day after day, day in, day out, but I'm more of a creature of what I ingested that day. And once again, I'd like to thank everybody. Um, I see my video about the bananas has gone crazy out there, and that is so happy to see that um, that, that can't be ignored today, that that person... He got that today. He heard that today. He, he can't avoid that today. Forbes can't avoid that today. They can't, see? That's what you're done with just that little effort. It's a great effort on my part, but because that's what I'm saying, right? That you all done that, right? It's very gratifying to see that that message is out there for sure. And it's like, I don't even care about that at this moment. Let's go looking for solutions on that side of it. Uh, because this is something I've done before, and it's something that's really important that we kind of we got to bat away at sometimes without, re you know, to get the message out there that this could be done with robotics and cameras and hydraulic hoses, pneumatics. Could do the exact same thing as somebody sitting inside of it without no electronics. How hard is it to do something like that? And take the top ten top and replace it with the uh, ten f uh, foot of soil with mixtures in it that absorb radioactivity. You can, as you're taking 10 foot of topsoil, you're laying down 10 foot of cement, and then you're you're putting down 10 foot of topsoil on top of that right behind it. You know, kind of scenario. 
and you're getting you're getting a whole lot of these particles now but you have to put all that in the sarcophagus so whatever the, the tractor or the hydraulic system you're going to use for it is it's a pretty straightforward system you strip off the electronics you put it all you feed it hydraulic hoses and everything is controlled with uh, actuators and joystick uh, sticks from far away through hydraulic loins so it's a little backwards because you're going to keep the guts of the the, the back hole two miles away or something and so that, that's pretty hard to run all those hoses all, but you could do it absolutely 100 percent if you had to do all that to put a toilet in some politician's house they they work it out to get every university on the planet they work that out i need i need a, I need a toilet but I don't want no electronics near my house. And okay, I gotta strip everything off. We gotta build our own road in there, and they do it. We can do that. We built uh, canals that are unimaginably long. You know, 90 mile long canals where thousands of people died. Well, we did it, and we built those big pyramids where thousands of people died. And we did it. China built the Great Wall of China. Just filled the bones, and they did it. And as a society. The bone shouldn't be the Pacific Ocean, and then the Atlantic, the Indian Ocean. There's no need of this. There's no need for this to have gone this far. They didn't need these types of isotopes, and I really don't care about blame. I care about solving this issue. And hydraulics with cameras, we got the cameras, we got the drones, we got the balloons, we got the satellites. We don't have to invent any of this. This is obsolete technology. I'm not saying we got to invent technology, but I'm saying we could. We can put every university on the planet at this and solve it because it's a big meteorite that's coming at us. We ain't got an option. Whether you like to realize it or not, the people that are pretending they're in charge that are not going to have a pension, they're not going to have a job in a few years because this is going to break down society. As the Pacific Ocean chokes to death and dies, do you think society is going to be, oh, well, too bad, that's, that's the way it goes, boy. Or that they're going to be able to have a false flag and just uh, destructive. It's not going to work. Or plague release. And, you know, you be careful of the plague releases you're seeing. All this talk about plagues could very well be uranium, plutonium, those buckyballs. Hot releases. Like I say in that headline, massive radioactivity release at Fukushima going on for almost three years. You know, three melter reactors. Unit 3, the one that poisoned the USS Ronald Reagan... It's two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet, but it already went through a chain reaction. Not counting the poles above it, which are a couple of million times worse than even the most deadly rods before it goes through that chain reaction. And they become two million times more worse. And that's what I mean, the neutrons, the alphas, the betas, the gammas are a completely different creature. I'm telling you right now, you wouldn't want it alongside you as it was. But once it goes through that chain reaction, they put it up in their storage pool. This stuff is, is off the shelf, okay? This is Mox Fuel. So when you got Mox Fuel doing that and it's up above it, it's millions of times worse than two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. So that's a real numbers game you're playing now. But it's 18 million times worse than Chernobyl. Chernobyl's one third the size. This is real. That's just one reactor at Fukushima. You can't ignore it any longer. You can't ignore what it's doing to this planet. Um, you can't ignore the Hollywood predictions of the supercell storms from picking up all that radiation, all those gammas and betas and alphas that are released at uh, 270,000 kilometers an hour. You know, these molecules are almost moving. At nothing can, you know, they're close to the speed of light, 270,000 kilometers an hour. That's real energy. It does that for 4 billion years, releasing that type of energies. The Beck holes are not something that goes pop like a firecracker and just stops. It does that. There's a firecracker every second for a couple of billion years. They always wanted to indoctrinate you and marginalize these numbers by saying cesium-137, half-life of 30 years. Forget it. you got to multiply that by 10, so it's 300 years. They say iodine-131 when you really should be saying iodine-129, iodine-131, seven days, but multiply that by 10. See? And so when they say seven days and they do that all the time, I can make clip after clip after clip of mainstream media talking about that, saying that, reciting that. Um, that's not a right lie because it's by 10. you got to multiply it by 10. And so the biggest flaw we got is we don't admit things. We don't want to admit it. We're just going to wait and pretend that the Philippines didn't happen, that Fukushima is not real. 
that uh, Chernobyl was the worst on the planet when they had to evacuate 7,500 communities in Russia in the late 40s. I keep telling everybody, that's why everybody thinks Chernobyl was the worst up to this date. Um, and we're older, we're wiser, and we, we're just not going to live in that paradigm anymore. It's not worthy, it's not fit. We have nothing to gain by ignoring Fukushima. And so the technology is not very difficult to deal with this if we actually put our mind to it. After all these years, they stole all the money, never once tried to put anything in a sarcophagus. They call the cast a sarcophagus. Right? Their licenses say they're going to put it in something and keep it there for a few million years. They put it in 45 gallon drums and throw it off the side of the boat. Boats in the oceans. For 50 years they've been doing that. They never once tried to put it uh, according to their license. But they'll come in and destroy your shop if you don't pay them their $50 a year for their license. And this can't go on no more. This sick, disgusting, filthy war machine. The people let their children go join the military, that they join the military themselves, not understanding um, that, you know, this, this is not uh, how we go ahead in our society, is mass killing of each other. And so that has to stop. All of, all of this has to, we have to grow up as a society. Seriously, that, you know, we got to deal with Fukushima, with hydraulics, with the technology that is obsolete. We got it. Everything we need to do it is obsolete technology. We won't even try. Japan is just like, no, we can't do nothing. No, we're just going to sit there and let it all pour into the ocean. Do, 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 like nothing is happening. Do, do, do. And the ocean is dying. The ocean is dead for 3,000 kilometers outside of it. We got all the models of all the plumes, how fast it overtakes the ocean, and they don't even include the uranium or plutonium ever, ever, never, even though that's what reactors are. That's what those reactors got. They don't got strontium in it, no iodine in it. They got plutonium and uranium in it. And we can't even admit the little things. It's just one endless law of bananas. And bananas, everywhere I go now, and every lecture I listen to, i got to listen to the right word. That's why I keep coming out slamming that now. That's enough of that. I get it. You don't, you know. Well, once you start trying to learn this subject, you run into bananas and background radiation of potatoes and background radiation of walking down the street. And you have all these people out there saying that, selling that in the media. That has to stop. That's retarded. Do you think this is going to go away? Something that's got a four and a half million. If you ingest one of this, your kid ingest one of these tomorrow morning on the way to school, they're going to die. They're going to get serious cancers, be really sick for a long time. You're going to liquidate all your assets to try to keep them alive. You'll have no peace in your life right up till the day they died, until the day you died. Because, you, you know, these are man-made isotopes. There's nothing on the planet can deal with these. There's nothing on the planet can survive these. There's no... Uh, remedy for these and they proliferated uh, nuclear products into our society so much and, and made it become such an almost a staple of our society why 4800 peer-review academic studies are published every day that could change all of that and eradicate all of that Germany provides 50% of its power with solar during the midday sun nothing see and they're not even getting there yet. But 50% of the power, that's the equivalent of 20 nuclear power plants. That's the equivalent of uh, five or four or three, you know, ch um, Fukushima power plants. That's a, that's a lot of power, 20 power plants, which is solar power. And we can do so much better, but it's all about the weaponized isotopes. It's all about space. It's all about traveling to other planets in the stupid, idiotic fantasy. We have no right to go to another planet. We're the worst thing could ever happen to the solar system, period. We're the very carnation of parasitic... Um, we're, we're, we're every alien movie we have ever created, that's actually us, what we would do to another planet. We would go there and destroy it, kill all life, and mine its resource. Uh, when that's not necessary, when there's meteorites coming by us all the time for all the resources we ever wanted, uh, but that's ultimately what the war machine would do, and the war machine has to go away, 
It's antiquated now. It's a dinosaur. It serves zero purpose. Only uh, 53 cents of every American dollar goes into the military industrial complex. You scream about Iran all the time is going to get nuclear proliferation while the ocean is filling up. And there's 49 military bases, U.S. military bases around Iran. How are they going to be an issue? How are they the problem? Even if they develop a single bomb, the Americans got 90,000. Hit away, they're ready to drop on their heads. All those bases are loaded, 49 bases around Iran. And every day I got to sit there and listen to the media screaming, oh, Iran's going to get the bomb. They're dangerous. You know, what are they going to dress up like camels and sneak out across that desert? It's idiotic. It's un unproductive. It's counterproductive. It's destroying all the natural resources on the planet, keeping this military industrial machine alive. Those aircraft carriers, you think they don't suck up the fuel? Not counting the planes and the jets and everything else, the missiles and the satellites, all the natural resources, all the, the precious metals goes into all of our military industrial complex. All of our precious metals. That's why we're at war constantly, because we sucked up all the precious metals somewhere else. That's why there's 900 military bases on the planet for just Americans. That's why um, we're in the jam we're in, on top of everything else, is we sent all of our sp uh, precious metals up into space. Because the military, it's Russia and America, Russia and America, and that'll never go away. They're doing that on purpose to keep the threat alive forever, so they they can be in power, or these handful of uh, crazies can be in power. And we can't live like that much longer. We got to deal with Fukushima and all the radiation on this planet. You know, we got to clean up Iraq. 5.5 million bullets a month, half of that was uranium 238 bullets from McAllister's bomb manufacturer. We got to clean all this shit up. This is not supposed to be on Earth. This is not indigenous. These isotopes, these gammas, betas, and alphas, and neutrons are not supposed to be on this planet. The uranium, because the uranium-238 is a totally different monster now that you weaponize it. That's the byproduct of it. It's a hideous monster that, like I say, if I had a banana, and I had a piece of uranium-238, the same size as a banana, the banana can kill every human on the planet. The uranium, rather, can kill every human on the planet. The banana can kill Timmy if we could shove it far enough off his... Um, and that's really important that we... The only way forward is we have to admit it. Like that headline today, massive radioactivity release at Fukushima going on for almost three years now from a TV station. Massive... See... And a lot of people out there, especially the sheeple that are brainwashed so well, it'll take them six months of headlines like that to wake them up. You could slap them right up the side of the head and they still won't get it. What are you so angry about? I gotta go watch Oprah. Uh, because they've been brainwashed. A lot of people are very susceptible to the mass hypnotic machine of the six corporations that control everything you see, everything you read, everything you listen to. Uh, is is useless now. It's finished. It's just a matter of another Philippines taking out 44 provinces and 7,000 islands with sustained winds of an F4 tornado that's 100 miles wide for four or five hours before somebody, you know, one more storm like that and the planet can't hide from what's coming at us. There will be much higher winds next time. It's not going to be like 185 mile an hour winds next time. Because the radiation is getting more intense, more powerful. Think about how the radiation goes in the ocean. And how the ocean is different layers. And it's moving at different speeds. So like the surface can carry that radiation a long way. Because those plumes are coming out. They went all over that ship and they were landing in the ocean. But they were getting lifted up and dropped down and lifted up. And these buckyballs that followed because the fire department, the only option they had, they were using the water... Uh, that had uh, flooded into into uh, the basements and everything else of the other buildings, which was extraordinarily radioactive, to spray back in on the fire, on the the, the, the burning cores, you know, 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. It had atomizes and aerosols, you know, all that uranium and plutonium, because that's what nuclear, that's what a nuclear... Um, 
the reactor burns. It doesn't burn cesium. It doesn't burn iodine. It doesn't burn strontium. It burns uranium, mostly, and plutonium. And if you weaponize the uranium and the plutonium and make weapons, but you don't use those weapons, and then you take that uranium and that plutonium now and you put it in, you call it mock fuel. You then got something 18 million times worse than Chernobyl. And Chernobyl was graphite. Um, and so what they're using at Fukushima, it just for the regular uh, reactors, is hideous. But the MOX fuel is number three. The rest of the reactors don't really matter. It's just that single reactor that's so so toxic and so deadly, and it's not going to stop unless we put all of our heart, all of our soul, and try. Because we're not trying. Everybody's saying, oh, we got to get in and do something. Uh, and Japan's saying, no, that's okay, we got it. Well, they haven't got it. They killed the Pacific Ocean. It's dead. It's just going to take a year or two for the actual the true effects of it to sink in everybody's head. But I dove that ocean for 14 years, and I can assure you that ocean is uh, dead. I've been studying uh, uranium-238 for about seven and a half years, and it's uh, the way it works, it kills the ability of the ocean to make oxygen because it's, it's, got, it's got such a long life, the uranium-238. And 234 and 235, when I looked into that heavily, for the weaponized part, uh, that shows an inconceivable amount of energy of uh, of the. It's it's uh, think of uh, like once again you can go into the ocean anywhere in the ocean you can take out a little sample any part of the ocean and put it under a little petri dish or a couple pieces of glass and look at it and there's millions of lives little creatures in there, and that stuff will pop like. Tepco's head here well, just before I go off here tonight. Uh, the uranium is putting out a Beckwell. The Beckwell is traveling at a 270,000 kilometers an hour. So it punches into these micro protoplanktons, into the oxygen, to the very foundation, the very soup of life that is the ocean, and destroys it. Okay, well that only took a second. And it sends out these, uh, these beats at 270,000 kilometers an hour in all directions. And that doesn't stop for 4 billion years. So everything in that little petri dish is dead pretty fast if it gets close to that kind of radiation. So imagine that floating around in the ocean just by itself, how harmful that would be for 4.5 billion years. But imagine a 1 to the power of uh, 137, 10 to the power of 137, or 10 to the power of 1.6 billion, or 100 to the power of 600 trillion uh, when you're talking about disintegrations per second. Imagine that getting picked up in typhoons and cyclones and hurricanes and imagine how that gets traveled around the world and is carried uh, off the ocean. Uh, it's picked up by thousands of miles, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of miles of clouds every day on the ocean and transported onto continents and coastlines and floras and faunas are affected and genetically altered. D it alters the DNA but it attacks your immune system. So we have to deal with this. We have to go deal with this like like kids in a sandbox that uh, plays remote control from a couple of miles away and cleans up the whole mess and just keeps working away at it. And the whole world needs an opportunity to develop the technology to deal with all of it. And we need to move on and accomplish space travel, but as a civilized society, not as a vicious, violent, bigoted, racist, prejudiced society that is self-centered and is going to destroy itself because it doesn't know any better and nobody gives it the opportunity. TEPCO has failed to, to, to inform the population of their own country. The government failed. Now our governments have failed us when we know for fact, and I got the links below, that the Canadian government knew that these hot particles were coming through, like California in particular and Seattle, counts of 1,500 uh, radioactive atoms per cubic meter. That's that's depressing. That's depressing. That's in your soil. That's uh, was on your children's clothing. Your children's breathed that in, breathed that in when they were going to school in those days. You did too. And we were all spo supposed to be told to go back in our homes and stay there for a couple of days and deal with this rationally, like they done in 19 uh, late 1940s when they evacuated 7,500 communities because the hot particles were going through that, and they had no and that was the right ethical moral thing to do, and that's what they done. 
We don't have those morals or ethics in our government. They're not worthy of their jobs. They have failed society. We are here to try to correct that, to try to bring some kind of common sense to that. That we got to go and deal with this. The game is over for TEPCO. They're fired. Okay? I fired them personally there a couple of months ago, if everybody remember. But, you know, they have to get lost. And they have to let the international community deal with this. We have to deal with this. This is not a game anymore, okay? I might sound like I'm nice and calm and cool and collect, but I'm screaming like a madman inside. Right? And have you met uh, the crazy man? He's got uh, an extra couple of legs. Yeah? He's got uh, three eyes and two heads. So I think he's a uh, it. It's a he and a she, I think. Or something like that. They're typical. They're typical employees. And uh, I'll come over and say hi to everybody before I wind it down. I just went on. I probably covered most stuff, but. It's simple. We got to do the job. We got to get busy. We got to organize. We got to use our institutions and our ability to problem solve. Instead of making weapons. Right? Instead of spending all of our uh, national wealth and education and the monetary, the schools, the academics, the peer reviews, uh, making military industrial weapons and uh, horrible, horrible, toxic st toys acceptable for children, we're going to take all that money and put it into solving all of these issues. And so we can have an economy on getting rid of all the radiation and the radioactive waste on this planet. We've got enough work to employ every human on this planet. At different jobs, getting rid of all the radiation, building the stuff, making the sarcophagus, coming up with the technology. We can employ the entire planet, cleaning up what the militaries have done to us from all the countries on this planet. That's a fact. And uh, we can engineer more, uh, uh, you know, potassium, magnesium, calcium, and iron, and cobalt, and carbon into the foods instead of taking it all out there and get rid of the formaldehydes and the glyphosates of the genetically modified foods that fill up all your corner shops and that's child abuse by the way giving that to your child GMO foods buying a chocolate bar is child abuse whether you know it or not buying your child a candy out of a corner shop that's child abuse you're murdering your children you're hurting your children you're harming your children by doing that it might not affect them for a while but it'll get up to them it'll catch up to them you can't avoid the damage that stuff does to you and that's a horrible thought that we live in a society where we have to be suspicious of everything we wear, everything we eat, because the system actually truly did fail us every way possible, relentlessly, never gave us a break once, never gave us any honor once. And as a society, we can do so much better. We had capabilities. We had it. Somewhere along the way, we lost it. And um, we need to pick it back up. We need to pick up the slack and just uh, get them to admit that there's radioactivity pouring into the ocean. It's we're it's in a whole lot of trouble. We all got to get busy. We all got to get serious. We all got to take this and push it as hard as we can. You know, how hard is it to do the right thing? Apparently, it's really, really hard. Once again, I remind you that the most viral video on the Internet every week or every month is when the media told the truth. One of the media told the truth and everybody will send it out. The media told the truth. That's how strange we live in and that has to change. Right? Uh, you know, the most popular person out there right now could be the media that tells the truth. They just got to put one foot out there and the world will turn them viral in a heartbeat. Especially about Fukushima. We seen Joe Rogan last night. At least they talked about it. They put up that stupid picture, but at least they talked about it. I guess they had to do that. We're seeing the major headlines coming out. We're seeing, um, we're seeing this kind of change. Let me bring it up here for everybody. ABC News: Government scientists baffle over white spots on cows around Fukushima plant. Less interesting to even touch it. Uh, CEO, that was uh, Joe Rogan and buddy from Voice. And you heard them guys. They're paying attention. They know. I mean, they're subconscious what they were saying, a lot of it, but... Article, nuclear engineer, radioactive flumes always coming out of the Fukushima Unit 3. We can't ignore that much longer. Right? You guys are doing a fantastic job. 
Uh, everybody's doing everything they can, and we got to take this to another level. And so we need women out there in high heels, stepping on bananas. Um, we need, uh, you know, if, unless we're talking about bananas in taxis and laundry mats and malls and how dangerous and scary they are, there's not going to be no attention uh, to Tepco. But I'm so mad at Tepco. I'm so m friggin' mad at Tepco and the ban bananas. I don't like bananas anymore. I like you though, you're pretty cool. You're probably cooler like that. Hi, I'm Dina. Radiation, dickhead, yay. Well, there you go, folks. That's the show tonight. Not much I can do. The solution is we start. The solution is we admit it. The solution is we get active. We get we participate. We do whatever we can, and we can't turn back. We can't change anything overnight. Um, but it'd be a lot easier if we had people out there that were like ourselves, the, the agile provocateurs, as I refer to you folks now. You're the agile provocateurs, and that's a good word. Because uh, you have to be, unfortunately, this day and age, agile and a provocateur in order to get the message out there. And we will um, catch you folks tomorrow night. When well, who knows what we'll talk about? I don't. I don't know one thing. I'll be back tomorrow night, and I'll be covering at least another thirty or forty headlines that I got today for sure. Uh, like last night's headlines and the night before is unbelievable. We'll tell you see what I got for you tomorrow night. Sounds like something pretty rough shape over there. I'll say goodnight to everybody. Jake Martin. Cats Alive. I'll come in and read everybody after. Jocelyn Workers. Anna Beck. Uh, Dwayne Campbell. Lisa. Checks and Balances. Alex Smith. We got Mama Knox. Hi, Mama Knox. Uh, you're a sweetie. Tom. Missing Sky, nice to see you again tonight. Red Button Studios out there. Uh, busy two folks. We got uh, two Stacys. I'll get the other one under my video. Uh, we got Big Now TV. Moments Nothing More. Kathleen Douglas. Mark Potsack. Mark's got another video out on Fukushima, folks. You want to go and check Mark's video out. George Party. I know Miss Milky's got a couple out. Oh, Miss Milky's right there. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. How often does that happen? I'm scrolling down, I say your name, and then three or four scrolls further down, you pop up. That's unbelievable. Hi, Kathy. Kathy's really busy. Thank you, Kathy. You're such a you're such a nice person. Thank you so much. And Sylvia, Char, Lunar, DC Babu. The next live video is tomorrow night at the, roughly the same time every night at roughly seven o'clock British Columbia time. Hi, Mitchell. Uh, every night, roughly, I'll put it at 5 o'clock British Columbia, Pacific Canada time. I'll usually schedule it to two hours, two and a half hours before I go live. And if you go to the front of my page and you click on Uploads, you'll see Playlist and that little click. Uh, also, you'll see Events. And if you click Events, save that page in your bookmark and you can check it. And if I got one scheduled, it's pretty well the same time every night. Unless I pass out, I'll still get up and do one. It'll be a little bit later, but it'll render the show back up. You can always watch it later. Thanks, Anna Beck. Dana gave Tefco some hit. <coughs> they gave me hit. It's more like it. Hi, St. Quinn. Yeah, Christopher. Uh, trailer. Thank you. Thank you again. Newman. Yeah, we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, you bet. Jake. Craig. David. Want to be 24 Live. Ketzer. Keep them coming. I'll start signing out. I always got to sign out twice before I disappear anyway. But that was a good little stream. And tomorrow night we're going to cover a whole bunch of headlines. And I'll break a bunch of them down. But I think they're really important. So we'll definitely get them out of our systems tomorrow night. Uh, bigger heads on it. I'm going to put four heads on this guy. <laughs> I'll just break all of them with a pencil or something, I guess. We'll catch you tomorrow night, folks. And I gotta refresh my page because I know it's not gonna sign me out until it does that. Yeah, gotta sign back in.
Here we go. It's unbelievable. I'm surprised you even got on the way I did tonight. Okay, we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Thank you. I'll come and read the comments after.